Hello, welcome to my video from West Oxfordshire. My name is Harry Morgan and I'm a consultant for pictures at Olympia Auctions. One silver lining about lockdown for me has been the fact that I've been able to spend more time in my own collection. And some of these are things I've had for 20 years and I've had the chance to look at them again and ask myself questions about what it was about them I liked, why I bought them in the first place, and maybe in some cases, um, whether I still like them anyway. Um, I've been dealing now for 20 years, um, 2020, in fact marks my 20th anniversary as an art dealer, and some of the first things I'm going to show you in a second are things I bought right back then. Um, and it's very interesting to look at them in a number of ways. Firstly, commercially speaking, have they maintained their value? Secondly, do I still love them? And, and thirdly, I suppose what it is about them that, 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 has, that, that has maintained this appeal. Um, so, and I will, wherever possible, try and link um, my pictures here today into things in the upcoming sale at Olympic Auctions, which is a very good sale, and uh, details of which will be announced, I hope, in due course. So the first picture I'm going to show you um, is this. Now, this is a, one of the very first things I bought um, back in 2000, and it was in my very first catalogue as a dealer. And at the time, I put it to one side because I just felt at a few hundred pounds, it was just too good value ready to sell on for what I thought was a really interesting thing. Now, commercially speaking, this is perhaps not the best buy I've ever made because it has some of the conventional things about art and value that are against it. Firstly, it's a religious subject, and I'll explain what it is in a second. Secondly, it's, um, it's painted in quite a subdued wash, sepia, um, brown, orangey washes, which make it not too colourful or strong when it's on the wall. And thirdly, it's painted in the earlier part of the 19th century, which is a period of British art, which is, for the most part, hugely out of fashion at the moment. So, what we have here, we have a very moving scene from the end of St Mark's Gospel. It's the moment when Mary encounters the angel at the tomb and says, He is risen, he is not here, behold the place where they laid him. It's from the end of St Mark's Gospel. It's by an artist called Thomas Ewins, who was a royal academician from the first part of the 19th century. Um, and it, more, perhaps most interestingly, is, is an example of work that was done through an organisation called the Sketching Society, that was founded in 1808 by two brothers, um, A.E. and J.J. Shallon, and it was dedicated towards weekly meetings where they would explore subjects of history and literature and the Bible. So, um, and they would execute large-scale wash drawings in exactly these mediums using these brown, sort of grey wash colours. Um, there were no more than eight members, but in their time, um, the, the visitors who came to the society included Turner, Constable and Edwin Lancia. But it's been largely forgotten today, and, and, and this still is a work that I find very moving and, and it really still belongs in my collection, I feel. And, and in fact, in some respects, that's quite a modern feel. There's a touch of... William Blake and Flaxman, I think, in the, in the sort of handling of the angel. Commercially speaking, as I said to you, back in 2000, I thought, this is too cheap at a few hundred pounds. 2020, I fear, this is still a few hundred pounds, which to me seems extraordinary, really, but it, and really extraordinary value. Um, I mentioned this in relation to the Olympia sale because we have, although we didn't have a work from the Sketching Society, we have a lovely wash drawing by Thomas Stothard, contemporary of Ewan's, um, again, I think the estimate is around £100, which to me seems absurd value, really, for a really interesting historical work. So now I want to look at something three-dimensional. Behind me on this table is a small stone sculpture. It depicts three monkeys. There they are, three heads in front of you there. And it's by a French artist called Henri gaudier Breschka, who came to England just before the First World War and met his death, sadly, in the trenches in 1915. His work's very rare. And he was essentially rediscovered in the later part of the 20th century by J.S. Ede, who was the owner and creator of Kettle's Yard in Cambridge. Um, and really his work is so rare, the, the original sculptures themselves are mainly in public collections. And his work is known to collectors today really just through casts like this one that were done in the 1960s by Ede in small numbers. So this is one of nine, um, of which one is in the Tate Gallery, one is in the Pompidou Centre in Paris, and here is another one. Um, we see the cast warts and all, the three monkeys' heads, as you see, one is broken. Um, the cast itself is broken. So Ede has allowed us to see it exactly as um, Gaudi Bresca left it at the time. And really, for something done in about 1911, 1912, it's a remarkably modern bit of 
um, British sculpture. It's a time when we were just emerging from the Edwardian period, really. So I'll put that back, and if you don't mind coming behind me, I'm going to show you the corner. Um, I have a nice wall here of um, drawings hung quite closely together, which is something I always like to do um, where possible, because I think they can look very strong. And we here have a work by two famous brother and sisters, a brother and sister in early 20th century art. Up there is um, Augustus John, a lovely drawing of a girl from his time at the Slade in the 1890s. And then below, um, a drawing by his sister, Gwen John, uh, of, a, of a girl praying um, in a church, a very typical Gwen John subject. Much has been said in comparison about these two artists, which one is the greater, which one is the more significant. But to my mind, these are both great early 20th century um, figures in British art, great in their own way, wonderful draftsmen, wonderful sense of economy of line in Gwen John and natural sort of almost on master draftsmanship in the Augustus John from the 1890s. Um, and um, in links to a nice Augustus John we have of a nude in the cell at Blythe Road at Olympia Auctions. So finally, the last artist we're going to look at is John Piper one of the most popular um, and instantly recognisable figures in late 20th century British painting. Also an artist I think is hugely misunderstood by the buying public, by people who, who know his work. The things that are most commonly said about Piper are, didn't Piper only paint churches and houses? And it's true, he was a significant painter of, of architecture. Um, the other thing that's said about him is, isn't his work often very gloomy? And while this can be the case in both cases, there's so much more to him as an artist. He was a significant figure in abstract art in the 1930s. He did amazing work as a stained glass designer, a designer for theatre and opera. Um, and his work can be at once both very dark and very colourful and very, very varied. So I'm going to show you three examples in my own collection um, very briefly. The first, the earliest one, is this um, view of Cheltenham from 1939. It, it's, it's an unfinished piece, so it's not totally resolved at the edges but it has this wonderful intensity as you look back into the gate, gate boats and beyond, sort of brooding skies, sort of sense of, of, of premonition about it almost. It's a study for a, a large um, lithograph he did of, of Cheltenham. Uh, at the time he was working in the shell guides of counties with his great friend John Betjeman. And it's, although small, I think it's a small sort of gem of a picture. So we're now gonna go outside to look at the um, final two works by Piper in, the, in my collection. This is, in fact, a stage set design. It's a design for the opera Death in Venice by Benjamin Britten from the early 1970s. Um, it's um, Benjamin Britten's last opera, and it's the end of a, an extraordinary partnership between Benjamin Britten and Piper through the formation of the English Opera Group. Um, it's the backdrop for the end of the opera and the desolate position that Aschenbach, the protagonist, finds himself at in just before his death of the plague. But it's a wonderful composition full of rich colour, and, sort of, and, and an extraordinary distant horizon that makes it a very satisfying thing to live with, I think. And then finally, also related to Benjamin Britten, this is about a ballet design. It's for the Prince of the Pagodas. It's from the 1950s, so it's about 20 years before the other work you've just seen. And it's a collage. It's, it's full of charming cut-out bits of collage to represent pagodas. Um, and I have images of the original backdrop for this, uh, Covent Garden, and, and you can see these forms there. Again, Alongside the sort of rather intense dark background, we have a lot of humour and colour in these cutouts in the foreground. Um, Piper is represented in the Olympia auction sale for a very fine flower piece, late 1990s flower piece, um, which shows yet another side his still life work. So, anyway, thank you very much.